Dr. Martin Kramer, thank you very much for joining the Jerusalem Center Online and for appearing today at the Sykes-Pico Agreement Conference taking place in Jerusalem. Uh, you discussed the histor historical background to the Sykes-Pico um, as was it a precursor to the Balfour Declaration, as some have claimed? Well, some do claim that it's a precursor to the Balfour Declaration, erroneously, for two reasons. First, Mark Sykes was famously pro-Zionist. He had a reputation uh, built up in his last years as being sympathetic to the idea of a Jewish home. Um, and he was British. And he was British. And second, Sykes-Picot has become a code word for uh, Western a manipulation and deception vis-a-vis -vis the Arabs. And since the Balfour Declaration is considered part and parcel of that, then it's assumed that Sykes-Picot must have been a precursor to it. Uh, in fact, the Sykes-Picot Agreement was considered by the Zionists in 1916 when they learned of it as a huge threat to the Jewish home plan because it was the first partition plan for Palestine. It would have divided Palestine into five separate parts. Part in the south would go to an Arab state under British control, uh, the part that's the Golan Heights uh, would have gone to an Arab state under French control. Uh, a big wedge of the Galilee, of the northern Galilee, would have been under direct French administration. And the bulk of the country, including Jerusalem and Jaffa, would have been under international control, basically an Anglo-French condominium. And on top of that, Britain would have had an enclave in Haifa and Acre. So it was basically a partition plan in which all the interests were to have been accommodated, except one, the Zionists. There was no consideration given whatsoever to the Zionist plan. And so when they learned of Sykes-Picot in London, they mounted a campaign against it. What the Zionists wanted was a British protectorate over all of Palestine. A British protectorate over all of Palestine was considered by them to be the only framework in which a Jewish home could flourish. And in the end, Sykes-Picot was never implemented in Palestine. Did the British object to the Zionist request for an um, exclusive British control of uh, Palestine? By the time the Zionists objected, and we're talking about April of 1917, there were many high British officials who themselves thought that the Sykes-Picot Agreement was disastrous. Why? Because it would put France in Palestine, and Palestine, of course, abuts Sinai and the Suez Canal, the imperial artery to India. Um, they thought that Sykes had been too generous. And there was withering criticism of Sykes within the British policy establishment for having made the concessions that he made. Even Sykes at some point began to retreat from the Sykes-Picot agreement uh, and try to get Picot to modify it because he realized that as the war progressed and Britain made the major sacrifices, there were, no British, there were only British troops fighting in Palestine. Go from the length and breadth of Palestine, the British military cemeteries in Gaza and Ramla in Jerusalem. There are no French military cemeteries from the First World War. The British were making the sacrifices, and they knew that they would be making the sacrifices. France was preoccupied in France in, during the First World War. So, in a way, the Zionist objections fell on fertile ground and just had to be nurtured. Uh, by the end of April 1917, the War Cabinet already gave instructions to Sykes to begin to work to revise the agreement in such a way as to give Britain exclusive control over Palestine. 